I've known Taco for a long time, but only met him in person a year ago. In that time, he's been a part of two cross-country operations. Although not owning a Jeep, something about them stuck with him. Well, he got us stuck. 100% skill issue. You think this will help? Uh, I don't know. This time, our story starts in North Carolina with a marketplace listing for a 2000 Jeep Cherokee. Four liter, automatic, four wheel drive, four door, and a bright flame red. Not a speck of rust on this thing. Less than 150,000 miles for 2,000 bucks. What a steal, eh? Oh, that's right. I forgot to mention one minor thing, one minor detail. The engine looks like this. For unknown reasons, it was torn apart, never reassembled, and left to rot directly exposed to the elements for six years. It's also in North Carolina. I'm in Iowa, Taco's in Texas. How are we going to make this work? Don't worry, Taco drew up a plan. He has a family gathering in Orlando, Florida coming up, and instead of renting a Tesla like last time... Is there a glove box? No, no glove box. Why is there no glove box? It'd be awesome if he could drive his own Jeep instead. As it happens, his dad lives in Georgia. He picked up the Jeep with a trailer and carted it all the way back to his place, where we can fix it, hopefully in time for this family gathering. After that, assuming nothing goes wrong, which it won't, don't worry, I'm going to escort Taco all the way back home to Houston, and then... Well, you'll just have to watch the video. So, Taco's gonna fly to Jacksonville, I'll drive there and pick him up, and then we'll figure out how to build an engine, which neither of us have ever done before, and then test drive that engine by going a thousand miles with it. Don't worry, bro, don't worry. This is one of the least bad ideas we've ever had. On the way down, I stopped by Ronnie and Jenna to inform them of the plan. Tactically located in Tallahassee, we can use their house as a staging base during our operation. I've made a maintenance stop at Ronnie and Jenna's house. I've been starting to hear this weird sort of ticking noise. Sounds like a zip tie is uh, around my drive shaft. It's making a whole bunch of noises that CV axles make when they fail. So I don't, I don't know if they're actually failing. They look fine to me. But we'll see. In the meantime, I have removed the front drive shaft to try to narrow down what this noise is. On a very related note, I recently swapped my whole interior to tan. I finally found a tan two-door with crank windows in Ohio. It was very nice. It was that forest service green. Oh, it was beautiful in person, man. Videos and pictures do not do them justice at all. I stripped the whole tan interior out of it, put it in my Jeep, it took me eight hours to fully strip the interior out of both Jeeps and reassemble one of them. It was not worth it. I love the tan. I think it spices it up in here, you know? It makes it look a bit different than the plain old gray. But it was absolutely not worth eight hours of work to get a tan interior. Anyway, the only piece I'm missing from said tan interior is the center console. The Jeep it came out of was a Forest Service Jeep. It was a fleet vehicle. And they had a whole bunch of holes drilled all over the center console. I think they had a CB radio mounted to it or something. So it was all mangled up and destroyed. I didn't bother taking it. But as it happens, Ronnie and Jenna have a tan center console for no reason in particular other than they found it and thought it looked cool. So they said I could have it. And uh, I'll give them a black center console back so they'll have a full black interior and I'll have a full tan interior. So they're on board with the plan. They gave me a side objective to pick up some rear vent windows for their XJ while I pass through Orlando. Got the console swapped. It's looking really nice. Took out the front drive shaft and my check engine light came on, so that's cool. Didn't know they had a sensor for that. It's still making the noise, but every time I try to record it, it instantly stops making the noise. So I like, it knows when I'm recording it. So all I gotta do is record my entire drive to my dad's house and it won't do it anymore. This early into the trip, I'm already out with one mechanical failure. Not a good start. I'll have to be extra careful not to break anything else or I'll look like an idiot in front of Taco. I tell you what, I'll keep a tally for both XJs and we'll see who wins at the end.
All right, so I took out the front drive shaft and none of the noises changed. So I put it back in and took out the rear drive shaft. And I was about to go on a test drive with only the front shaft trying to narrow down this noise. But when I took the rear shaft out, the innards of the U-joint turned into this powder. This cap just fell off. And all of the needle bearings are disintegrated. It just, it exploded. There's nothing left in there, that's all rust. Thankfully, I have a ball joint press at my dad's house. I was able to get a new Spicer U-joint from Advance, press it in, install the clips, and re-equip the drive shaft. We're back in business. Who knows how long that one will last, but yeah, I'll deal with that when we get there. Well, the weird ticking noise I was never able to capture on camera is now gone after a new U-joint. So all I gotta do is clear the drive shaft code. Citations will be issued. Well, we gotta be quick, boys. There ain't no sitting and waiting here. There he is. Where should I put this? You can just throw it back in here somewhere. The back's open if you want. Thanks for visiting Florida Taco. For 20 minutes. Yeah, not bad. Needs a new headliner, the usual. Dude, it's super clean in here. Very, very minty. Manufactured on... The, the usual. March 11th, 2000. Hold on here, let me reopen it for the video. Oh, okay. <laughs> you ready? Oh. oh, that was so much more majestic than the first time. <laughs> Dealer stock number. Oh, this is the paper from the. No way. Yeah, dude. Daimler Chrysler. Look at that, dude. Look at all the. Look at all the uh, options. It was it, built specifically at for. The, wow, somebody ordered this one. Look at all the options it comes with, dude. That's cool. Somebody, somebody custom ordered this one. Without cruise control. <laughs> Taco bought this Jeep sight unseen, and upon our first inspection, things are looking really good. The paint is pretty sun faded, to be expected, but there's no rust anywhere. They got it covered up with cardboard at least. Yeah, we got a lot to unpack here, but. Up. Oh no, it's not connected. I thought it was yeah, that's fine. Was that power steering pump? Yeah. Yeah, they, it mounts to the intake manifold, which is... I got new everything. I got new everything. Yeah. I mean, it looks okay from from uh, not seeing the inside of the engine perspective. So we towed it over to our working area, bracing for the incoming hard work over the next five days. The Jeep looks beautiful, but the engine certainly does not. In preparation for this, Taco researched the bottom end. He'll be in charge of honing the cylinder walls, installing the new pistons, and replacing the connecting rod bearings. Well, I'll tackle the top end, you know, because I've done that stuff before. The cylinder head, manifolds, and inevitable diagnostics when the thing doesn't start first try. Yeah, 100% humidity out here. Oh, this one doesn't have the struts. No. You, you remember where the prop is? Uh, right here. Yeah, does that work? Hood prop works. Confirmed functionality Look, of hood I have prop. A hood light. Yeah. Score. OEM plus. Oh yes, all those sediments. We're gonna need a new belt. I ordered one. Okay. You know that doesn't look too bad at all. Shit. Look at yeah. Look at cylinder two. There's oh, there's man. definitely some buildup on there. That is not as bad as I thought it was, though. We clear the room, we get enough room for the uh, pulley, and we can probably turn it over yeah. with a wrench. Turn yeah. it over with a wrench and turn it over with an impact. I can see if it turns over. All the lifters are in there. There? Yeah, they're yeah. sludged up bad, but it'll be fine, I think. We can get some lift, we can get some sea foam before we put it back together and it'll clean it up. Yeah. Oh, this, this is. Issue. I didn't buy a new one of those. Can I, what is that, that the distributor? Yeah, the it's distributor. A, it's just a camshaft sensor. Is that something I can order, get yeah, here they, at the yeah. store? Yeah, oh, yeah we're good. We're good. Day zero didn't involve much teardown, just an in-person once-over, because by the time we got there, it was already like 6 p.m. Our objective for day one 
get the engine apart. Day one. All right, so the engine is seized, as you may imagine. Pretty sure all the pistons are rusted to the walls. It really does not look good in there at all. Today's objective, we're gonna get the oil pan off and disconnect the rods and try to pound each piston up and out. So today we're gonna tackle the oil pan, which should just slide out because it's got like two inch lift on it. So hopefully we don't have to deal with any of this jacking the axle down nonsense. All right, so the last two oil pan bolts are half inch and they have that stupid rubber hook around them. And I was unable to pry the rubber out of the way, so I just shoved a utility knife up there and cut it. This rubber extends all the way up to the bolts. Yes. And you can see how I just cut it, so there was enough room to fit a socket in there. Right? You see right. where I cut it? Yeah, I see that. Okay. That's what happened. So do I need to buy a new one of these? No. This is the, like, the least important thing ever. You just reuse this one. All you gotta do is <laughs> fish it around the transmission lines. <laughs> Are we missing a bolt? Is that what's going on? Oh, we are, right here. Okay, hold on. Alright, show us how it's done. <laughs> yeah. Four hours in my ass. <laughs> Alright, cool. Oh yeah, she's clean too. Wow. She's very... Very clean. Wow. Oh. That's, that's actually really good looking I was, in there. Yeah, I was actually expecting a little bit more like sludge. I wouldn't replace the oil pump, honestly. But I bought one. Uh, oil pump for sale, OEM called. <laughs> we should... Cylinder 2 is good. I didn't wiggle this one. The They're best, all loose. The best ones are 2 and uh, 4. Can I, do a, can I do a bit where I'm like, you see all these cylinders, and then I flick my fingers, and then they're all out? Yeah, we can do that. There it is. There it is. Wow, that's exciting. There it goes. I want to point out again that we've never done any of this before. This is all just based off of Dex's entire channel. I would not trust Waymid to build you an engine. Keep it going. There it is. All right. In Dex, rotate this shit with a flywheel before, or with just this. Oh man, it ain't budging. Hmm. Well, try this. To the right, right? Yeah. Please. Hey! <laughs> there it goes, man. Alright. Uh, Alright, yeah, don't don't move it anymore. Let me get those pistons out. Yeah. He's coming, right? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I got it. Cylinder one is actually really clean because the piston was all the way at the top. Cylinder two is a lot worse because the piston was farther down. So the rings weren't able to seal against the atmosphere as well. Number four is going to be real fun. That one had a ton of oil in it. Look at that, that's real fancy. 
Wow. Almost looks like a toy. Now that it's all apart, we'll have the connecting rods transferred to new pistons by a local machine shop and also have them clean up the cylinder head. While they're working on that stuff, Taco's gonna hone the cylinders and we'll get the block itself ready for assembly. I do want to note how awesome it is that we can do all this without an engine crane. Like, how many other cars can you rebuild the engine without removing it from the vehicle? That's the XJ for you. Really? <laughs> that is unbelievable. <laughs> Wow, that's actually like I wasn't recording the first time because I didn't think it was gonna do anything. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that looks incredible. I mean, we probably run it through there again. There's no, a that, bit that left, was really but... just test pass, and we honestly weren't timing it. We should have been timing it. Um... Yeah, I mean, you only ran it for like ten seconds. Shit. Anyway. All right. This is a ball hone. It's designed to scrape off impurities in a cylinder wall. You lather it with honing oil or. Honestly, just transmission fluid works fine, too. And then you run it up and down the cylinder in a drill for, well, we chose 45 seconds. It's clearing up in between. You see it? All around it, how clear it is. Like, damn near, this is going to be shining by the time we're done with it. Yeah. Looking good. Yeah, you got the entire... Oh, man, I'm, I'm tripping. You got the entire wall covered, so... What? Nothing. What are you tripping on? Are you recording? Yeah. We repeated the process for every cylinder and then wiped out the honing oil with some shock towels. One thing to note while doing this, you can help yourself avoid hitting the crankshaft out the bottom by spinning it out of the way for each one you do. With the cylinders all cleaned, we began readying the head mating surface. And when that was done, we kind of ran out of things to do for the day. So we tackled the differentials and transfer case fluid. Yeah. I think we're gonna do five and six again, like you said, but. Yeah. They look good. Yes, sir. Uh, we're testing my E fan because it doesn't look like it works. So. Hey! Runs good. Yeah. Sounds a hell of a lot better than it did when we spun it by hand. Yeah, must have just had some sand in it. Some good CFMs. <laughs> All right, it doesn't look the greatest on the video here, but it is really clean. It's very smooth. And uh, if we look down cylinder two right here, we'll see Taco is Hello. <laughs> <laughs> filling the front differential. We're just waiting on the machine shop to finish up those pistons and the cylinder head, so we figured we'd uh, work on the differentials while we were waiting. Yes, sir. Oh, tool utilization. Good job. Um, take one. Alright, take one. <laughs> oh, we got all the bolts out and it's <laughs> unbroken. Yeah. Wonderful. You, you guys didn't miss anything. There you go. Look at that. First try. Take First one. First try. Sweet. How them gears look? Didn't even crack a sweat taking that off. Alright, we're going to change the transfer case fluid. And the drain and fill bolts are 10 millimeter Allen bit, which I don't have. But what I do have is a T50 something Torx bit that conveniently slots right into said Allen bits. Hello. Oh, hi. And we can use that to crack the fill bolt loose first. Yeah, if you can't get the, if you can't get the fill bolt, don't crack the drain bolt. <laughs> Bingo. Bingo, I got it. Okay. Somebody's been watching his Chris Fix. Oh shit. Why is there so much in there? And why is it so fresh? <laughs> <laughs> huh. Well, I guess that's the drain bolt now. Our ring gap is going to have a clearance, and then that clearance can be anywhere between, I think on the cylinder, I think on the cylinder walls, it's between one and three thousandths or one and four thousandths. I'm not too sure, but it'll, it's a, it's a Jeep 4 It's going to run no matter what. 
I mean, it could, okay. be, it could probably be 5,000 over and it would probably still work. That piston fits in there good though? Yeah, perfectly. Wow. I'm excited. All right, let's see where we leave off. We've got the uh, head surface cleaned up. I know this spot looks really bad, but it's smooth. Like there's like no imperfections in that. Just impurities in the metal. But we got the, the mating surface pretty damn well cleaned. And Taco ran through each cylinder with the ball hone with some ATF on it. Clean those all up very impressively. I think our next step is to install the pistons. So we got them all lined up here. I don't know how to install pistons, but he's going to teach me. <laughs> it's pretty exciting, man. I also replaced the rear main seal while we were in there. After we get these in there, we'll be able to button up the bottom half of the engine. Hold on. Uh. All right, down. All righty. Still bottomed out. Home free, baby. That's what I'm talking about, dude. It's notched in. Hell yeah, man. Come down and look at it. All right, and that's. Is that directional? I think it is. The lock's on the right only, I thought. Like the bear. I'm talking about the end cap itself. Yeah, the bearing can only go in it one way, but the whole end cap. Um, we wrote six on yeah, it. Like yeah, yeah, you got it the right way. Yeah. Okay. We're just going to snug them up for now. Okay. We'll go back and tighten them later. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you get what I mean. It's looking good so far. Don't put whatever I just said in the video. I don't think I recorded that. You want to repeat yourself? A number five washer? Guess I ought to get down there first, huh? Piston? Piston! Alright, engaging piston. Hold on. Oh, actually, you're supposed to. Actually! Jeez. Oh. Can we get a 2.5 liter in the chat? Come on, Taco. Come on. Sorry, my hands hurt. I'm over here doing all the hard work. All right, yep. I'm just holding the camera. I don't know what I'm doing. It works. Why are you spinning it backwards? I don't fucking know. <laughs> Alright, now that Taco has not struggled whatsoever to get the thing on the bolt. Yeah! It seems to spin. Yeah, this will be good for the, uh, yeah, I need these Zoom. oil pans. Holy smokes! Yeah. That looks 100% different than it did. It's all new. Everything's you new. You got the whole, so what do you got to do on the bottom yet? You still got to put the... Put the oil pan on. Put yeah. the oil pan, but the pistons are all connected and everything. The yeah. pistons aren't all connected. They are. Yep. Yeah. How do you get four down and two up? Is that correct? The firing yeah. order. Okay. Oh, there it goes. All right. Yeah, yeah. There's your buddy throw. It's called buddy throw. <laughs> Look at that thing turn, man. The other day I was thinking that thing ain't never gonna turn. I know, I do. I was trying to be positive and I didn't want to say nothing, but I was like, you were turning on? I was like, oh my gosh, that's no. not a good sign. I was about to strip out the crank bolt. Look how nice that, that thing is. Yeah. smooth, huh? Sounds yeah. like I can even hear it. Like, yeah. The vacuum? Like, yeah. yeah. Alright, he's washing all the uh, oil pan bolts. Now that we've got the engine together, we're gonna put the oil pan on. Something I guess I never noticed about the oil pans is starting in 01, the gaskets have these little nubs that stick up on the very end. Apparently 2000 and older engines don't have those. I don't know how I never knew that, but we're still going to stick a bead of RTV along here, and then a bead of RTV along here, and a little nub right over these spots because that's where the timing cover meets. And then we're going to shove the oil pan in this very easily accessible 
four inch lift vehicle. And I think that's it for day two. Mm -hmm. Day two was packed full of progress and day three would be better. With the lower end assembled, the machine shop had our cylinder head ready too. But taking a break from engine assembly, we decided to go yarding instead. When something's taken apart and left apart this long, things are going to get lost. We need a camshaft sensor, some random bolts, an oil dipstick and a cap, and a set of rocker arms. These are all things that are easiest found in a junkyard. So across southern Georgia we went. Day three. I called ahead to this yard. Guy said they have seven or eight Cherokees. And yes, I specified Cherokee, not Grand Cherokee. If I wanted Grand Cherokees, I would have said Grand Cherokee, but I didn't say Grand Cherokee, I said Cherokee. Anyway, they ended up only having two XJs and absolutely ridiculous prices, so I do not recommend them despite the courteous golf cart ride. He's <laughs> going shirtless again. Man, it's hot out here, fellas. <laughs> what are we? Oh, man. Cream of the crop. Look at that steering wheel. Oh, it's a, it's a bastard year. It is. Oh, it's a V6. Look at that. Wow. No wonder it's here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> it's pretty well stripped. Like, they did, literally only the engine is left. Look at these spacers on it. I might want to take them. No. <laughs> wow. Dude, this steering wheel is quality, though. The leather still feels good. This is an 86er. Died at 160,000 miles. Got an ashtray light. Might take that. Was it a five speed? Yeah, I guess all the V6s were five speeds. Could get the clutch pedal, sell that. Why do you keep yelling at me? And over here, bad motor. Who could have seen that one? Oh. Yoink. I think I got visual on another XJ. Oh, you keep finding them before me, dude. <laughs> 95 or 96. This yard has like seven WJs, and every single one of them is a four liter, which I find kind of odd. Uh, on this one, I'm going to go after the camshaft sensor. Uh, and we're missing a couple valve cover bolts. Just, just literally random little things. One right here was stuck. One of them down there was missing one, but the other one was this style. Oh, and it came off. Will it work? Yeah, it looks like it. It's not the ratcheting kind, I don't think. Yeah, it is. I, I guess it's stuck. Check it. It'll work. Okay. If you got it off, it'll work. All right. Well, I got that other one off. You said it wouldn't work. Yeah, well, it didn't have threads. Let's get the hell out of here, man. All right. We're going to do the Grand Cherokee oil dipstick swap today. Boom, swap. There you go. Well, that looks nice and shiny. All right, so here's what's going on. We took off the first manifold thing because one of the bolts that holds this flange on was not there. And there's also a whole bunch of these dirt dauber nests all over the pipes in there. We're considering taking off the second one. So we're going to get those out of here somehow. This is a compressor powered vacuum. We didn't want to blow air into the exhaust else these dirt daubers might get caught in the catalytic converter and ruin it. So we sucked them out instead. Taco made some finishing touches to the cylinder head. We won't forget that last corner bolt, our new gasket, and now this is starting to look like an engine. Don't forget thread sealer on the front corner bolt, the proper torque sequence. There it is. Whoa. Yep, yep, you got it. And yeah. before we knew it, we'd installed the push rods and rocker arms, ready for the valve cover. 
Alright, I did the uh, finger in the spark plug trick. We have at least some compression on all cylinders. You might notice this second set of rocker arms is a different color. We got this off of a 95 because the original rocker set that went here, the little bridge was totally bent way out of whack, like unsalvageable with pliers. So we're going to hope that 1995 rocker arms are the same and will work. But other than that, we are ready to install the valve cover and that'll be internal engine complete. Now that's looking like a four liter. Yes, sir. All right, Taco's putting in the spark plugs. Got the uh, static reducer attached. And then we're gonna call it a night for day three. Hell of a three days. We forgot to put the head gasket in. <laughs> Deep hasn't let us know in two months. So. All right. I bet, would you be willing to bet on one dollar? That sure. Okay, so you, if the AC works, I owe you a dollar. If it doesn't work, you owe me a dollar. All right. I do not think that AC is going to work. Day four. I gave her some wet food last night. Oh, she... yeah, that's it. Now she loves that's you. That's why she came in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, we made a quick run to the hardware store to get some bolts for the water pump pulley. And then by O'Reilly's for some fuel injector O-rings. I've got the exhaust manifold mounted up. I'm about to put the intake on. It was kind of annoying because we don't have these studs. So it's very difficult to line up without the studs in the engine. The previous owners just replaced them with bolts for no reason. Taco's putting in the starter right now. I don't know where we'll see you after the next update. Another thing they lost was the nut for the ground strap. So I've got one of those for when Taco inevitably does the big seven upgrade. And I gotta tighten down these new bolts for this exhaust flange. And I'm gonna give it just a little extra. Okay. All right, there's vi visual confirmation that Taco has torqued down the lower starter bolt. Yes, sir. What does the top one go to? 35. There's the upper one. All right, starter is torqued. Starter is not going to fall out. The fuel rail has been sitting for so long, there's a whole bunch of rust in it. We sprayed water through it with the hose and then blew compressed air through it. Just kind of letting it dry for a little bit. Other than that, it's ready to go in. It's coming together. Mm -hmm. We are missing the CCB hose. Might have to customize that a little bit. I got good news, Taco. I see it, but you found I it. I found the thing we were missing. So we're not missing it anymore. Yay. Exterior engine assembly went really quick. We hooked up the battery. We're not ready to start it yet, but just to see if all the electronic stuff works and check the miles, which we didn't know until this point. And when he turned the key to the run position, I did not hear the fuel pump prime. Turn off the wiper in the middle there. How? Oh. Down, down below the heater controls. <laughs> there you go. There we go. All right, I guess turn her off, huh? All right. That's exciting. I'm ready for fuel pump test prime. Nothing. Here's how things sit as of now. I've sent Taco to get a new fuel pump. We've confirmed that the pump is getting power. I tested the connector with a multimeter. All the relays and everything work, but it just doesn't do anything. So while he's getting a fuel pump, I'm here just finishing up the engine bay. I'm gonna get the fans attached and whatnot, uh, and then start working on getting the gas tank out. Dude. You're not gonna believe this, but these suckers just started unscrewing. Look at the amount of non-rust there is in here. Even this stupid EVAP line that always rusts only has a layer of surface rust on it. That's incredible. There we go. There we go. 
perfect. It only well, took me like 10 minutes. There's no rust on this thing. Well, there's our problem. <laughs> the dirt daubers ate it. <laughs> God damn, no wonder that thing wasn't working. You see why? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. You see why I did? Why I wanted to drain the gas now, right? Yeah. Tomato, <laughs> it's tomato sauce. <laughs> didn't run on that. <laughs> Jeez, that's terrible, though. All right, boys. We uh, got the inside of the tank pretty clean. There was like a pile of sand in it. That was pretty cool. So now we're about to see how hard this is to put in. Hopefully we don't have flashbacks to the ZJ tank swap. Okay, just like all the videos where nothing goes wrong, nothing went wrong, and the fuel pump has been installed. But this time, actually, nothing did go wrong. Yeah, that it was... It took like five seconds. That was kind of weird. Anyway, Taco had the brilliant idea to siphon the old gas out of the tank with uh, the coolant overflow hose. So, that was pretty cool. And it worked great. Yes, it did. For the video, be like, oh, just topping off the coolant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's how you refill your engine coolant, gentlemen. Prestone certified. I'm a professional mechanic. I know what I'm talking about. So does Taco. Tell him Taco. Gotta get the green kind. So we've got the fuel pump relay removed, even though we just replaced the fuel pump. Right now we're just going to spin the engine so that oil gets pumped up through it. And uh, we're going to listen for inconsistencies that might tell us we're low on compression on certain cylinders. I'm going to watch all the accessories, make sure nothing explodes up here. Okay. Pretty good, huh? It sounds, it's, it's got a little bit of a step to it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like one cylinder has a little bit lower compression than the others. Can we be good to start it now? No. I would, I would crank it over for like a solid <laughs> Yeah, the only concerning noise I'm hearing is some sort of squeaking noise, but that could be the bearing in the starter itself, or it could be that alternator. It's on that side of the engine. Um, but I guess I'll go ahead and throw the fuel pump relay in there. Let me check the oil quick, actually. I started getting all sorts of lights. Check gauges, engine light. Yeah, fucking... did, well, did the oil pressure move at all? I didn't see. You gotta watch that stuff. I didn't know why, I didn't know that was in there. You got a voltmeter, you got a temperature gauge. Hello guys. You got oil pressure, you got fuel. What's the fuel gauge reading? Fuel gauge is reading. You didn't look at anything. <laughs> I didn't. Why are you even in there then? What are you doing in there? To do this. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, let me. I'll check now. Hold on. I'm gonna put this fuel. No, don't put it in, in yet. Let right, me check okay. real quick. All right, All right. Yeah, we got good voltage, no gas, it's accurate. Oil pressure is doing strange things, but that means it's been primed with oil. It's going up a little bit. Yeah, that's just been yelling at you for not having gas. All right, crank it over again. Let's see what happens. God, bro. I'm so scared. I'm so nervous. All right, so you're just going to prime it. You're just going to prime the key, turn the key to run, and we're going to listen for the fuel pump, and you're going to do that like three times, just so we can get fuel all up here in this rail. There it is, see? Heard it. You heard it? Yeah. So it's working now. All right, one more. All right, go ahead and fire it up. Where are you going? I think he's chickening out. Okay, so we completely have everything together. I haven't done any videos for myself. Wayman has all the good ones, but... <laughs> From the fuel pump and... Um, <laughs> We're about to, we just put in the fuel relay and <laughs> <laughs> fire in the hole. <laughs> all right, all right, 
let's slow down and think about what could be going on here. So obviously, first of all, the injectors could be clogged. Second of all, our cam index sensor could be off and it's not firing the spark plugs at the correct time. Those are the two things that immediately come to mind. All right, so we realized there was no fuel in here, so I let all the pressurized air out. He primed the key a couple more times, and now there is fuel coming out of the rail, so we're gonna try it again. We are clear for engine startup. <laughs> it kind of it wants to. Don't flood it. All right, all right, calm down. We're getting somewhere. You know, honestly, it probably is those injectors, but let's think. It's missing really bad, but yeah. Oh, the gauges don't have communication. It's trying to clean out that injector. There it goes. <laughs> the gauges have magically fixed themselves. We got oil pressure. Oh, it fixed itself, and it's idling better. Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe you just had to be woken up. It's still missing. But not as bad. No, nowhere near as bad, yeah. Just make sure you're watching oil pressure and temperature. Okay. Much better. Nice. Dude, I'm smiling so hard right now. This thing was forgotten about. Like, I'm really happy because, man, I spent a lot of money, bro. A lot of money for parts, for necessities, like oil, and just so much money. And, like, it's running. It's it's functioning. I damn near want to throw it. Will it take gear? Damn there right. You <laughs> Woo wee man. This is just wow. dream come true. Like, damn, this... There's a lot of months of planning. I feel like it's hit, I feel like it's uh, not even missing anymore. It is. <laughs> I mean, it is, but it's still it's consistent enough to yeah. We're only drive it down on, the road. Yeah, like we're only missing on one cylinder. I'm waiting for the check engine light to tell us which one. Like the check engine lights. The check engine lights not even on. That's I how <laughs> good we did it. Like we did it so good. That <laughs> Look at all that oil burning off of there. That's I all hate. our hands and brake cleaners. <laughs> yeah. and that's a running engine if you ask me. It's smooth too. Yeah, it's smoothing out. We just gotta let it run for a bit. Not that there's really any gas in it, but... <laughs> wow. Is it fucking in the gas station? <laughs> Not oh, yet. Down, you're down. <laughs> we gotta worry about the coolant. Uh, um, we gotta get the thermostat to open and stuff. Yeah, dude. <laughs> this is my dad that got in now. Holy cow! <laughs> What's that burning? Just oil? Yeah. Our hands and everything. Yeah, all yeah. the different parts we've touched. Holy shit. Look, hey, look I want to... I can't believe... I mean, I can believe it. <laughs> man. Good job, guys. Let me just start out by saying fucking great job. It's holding temperature and oil right here. I told him not to replace that oil pump. I'm glad he listened to me. I, I would not trust an aftermarket oil pump in a 4 liter. You know, unless it's good, but whatever. The alternator's charging. <laughs> I did not see that coming. Wow. It moves. How did you get in there? Look at this dude. Give me my ride! <laughs>
Yeah, smoking though. Smells like it's burning oil. Woo! Yeah, it's just burning oil off the exhaust still. Well, the first test drive was a success. Aside from the front driver brake caliper potentially sticking. You know, after sitting for five years, those rotors were all rusted to hell. And, uh,. Now there's like 500 degrees of radiant heat coming off of this wheel, and it was smoking. And it doesn't really move forward when you just put it in drive and let go of the brake, so might have to do a brake job. I didn't check that AC. I was going to do that with you. Yeah. I wouldn't call that conditioned air. I would. What? That's literally warmer than the outside air. Hold on. What are you talking about? <laughs> Let it cool down. Is it gonna cool down? I haven't even heard the compressor engage. I don't think you have AC, sir. You owe me a dollar! Yeah, I see what you mean. It's not happy at all. I'm not on the brake at all right now. That's how fast we're slowing down. Alright. Day five. That's not Make sure to watch yourself with that pack. Yeah, oh my gosh, I just realized. <laughs> so here we can see Taco trying to pretend the AC has always worked. Uh, is that nothing in there? I don't think anything's gonna be bad. Hold on, wait. You, you, gotta, you, gotta you gotta take, cool. hey, you gotta take this off, the safety tab thing. You gotta unscrew the cap, get this plastic out of there, and then screw the cap back on. I Really? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I can't believe these southerners don't know how to use the can of AC Pro. You gotta turn the AC on. All right, all right. What's it reading? Nothing? Yeah. The compressor ain't even kicking on. Yeah, it's filled up now. The compressor's staying on now. Hey, is this normal? No. Well, it's, it's normal, but it's not right. Now that the AC was charged, we can move on to less important things like the seized front brakes. In a matter of about 20 minutes, I replaced the front rotors, pads, and calipers. O'Reilly's actually gave us the older style rotor for 99 prior. I had to bring a tape measure into the store to make sure we got the right ones. Oh yeah, that feels way good. Hey, yeah. I'm Roll. not pressing the gas at all. Yep. All right. Want to see how bad these windshield wipers are? Oh boy. <laughs> Is this the turn lane right here? I can't see what the shit. <laughs> so there's a little. You squeeze these two tabs on this thing and open it and then you just hook it on the hook in there. There you go, and then you close that little flap. There you go. Wow. All right, good job. See my radio? You ready? <laughs> Look, you click this button right here. Whoa. <laughs> That's how you put the CD in. You know what's what? cool though is the fact that that works. I got a bunch of CDs at the house, dude. Yeah. <laughs> we need to see if the four wheel drive light works. Okay, yeah, good idea. You ain't get up to the all right, mine's gonna go up. Do I have to press the brake? No, just just one click. It works! Oh my god! We're home free. Bye, right, babe, bye. I love you. Steel of a century, boys. It'll like swim up to the shore real fast and push the fish up onto the shore. And then it'll do like a belly flop up onto the shore and just start snatching the fish up as fast as it can. I had a plan all along. I was trying <laughs> to surprise you. And it worked. Oh my gosh! <laughs> just slow down. Just slow down. Just let off the gas. Did you feel that, Dad? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry, we all felt it. <laughs> Let me see my girls one more time, okay? I love you as much as I love them. Ah. You 
You, you lifted your head. <laughs> Keep your head down. We're going to get the cops called on this one. <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> Damn! Nice. I think you Is killed someone. There? Yeah. I want to get one. <laughs> yeah, I'll back up don't worry. Damn. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's The Jeep was roadworthy as me and Taco headed back into Florida, entering the next phase of the operation. We'll stop in Jacksonville at a yard that has a 2000 Limited and hopefully snag cruise control for the long ride home. In Orlando, I'll pick up that set of vent windows for Ronnie and Jenna and then head over to my dad's house while Taco continues south to Tampa to go visit his grandparents. So I guess like without even the AC being on, sorry, hold on. You dropped your Take vape. two, take two, take two. The foam, like without the AC being on, the foam that's in the AC blowing out. So like if you look in yeah, the passenger. Yeah, I see, yeah, I saw that. Dude, it's like when we first got on the highway and I got past 50, dude, I got death wobble bad. But then yeah. it started going away, so I sped up. And once I hit like 60, 70, dude, it drives good. But yeah, 50, it's definitely 55, wheels. yeah, it doesn't like 55. But yeah, this shit was blowing all over me, and it just turns into powder the moment that you touch yeah. it. It disappears. <laughs> so, it's magic. Yeah. Look, it's everywhere. Yeah. Hey, there's another XJ. Hey, <laughs> hey did you see the one we passed on the road? Yeah, yeah, an old Renix. All right, how are we doing? Still oil in there. Have it burned a lot? I don't know. There's still coolant in there. Like the guy that carries the golfer's golf clubs, I just follow you around while you take the car parts off. 422 is the row. All right, I guess we go this way, because I see two. <laughs> they always have the Jeeps all the way at the way back, Where every time. Belong? Row 420 on a Liberty. Oh, look at this lake. This yeah, we could get and crawl around in that swamp and get some disc brakes for you. Uh, yeah, not not out here, but you know. All right, to get past this one. Oh, jeez, Indiana Jones <laughs> over here. <laughs> I didn't expect that to happen. <laughs> All right, we gotta look for an alternate route. <laughs> oh, you got it. Okay, where are you gonna go from there, though? I think I'm going over. Oh man, she's rough. Oh, it has cruise control! It has cruise control! I see it in the engine bay. Alright, that's what we came here for. We just gotta get to it. What, what, oh, hey, there's a transmission we could use as a stepping stone. Is that gonna be helpful? Look at this. It's a whole ass transmission. Oh yeah, here, just grab that. Hey, this one will have the overhead console. It has it! It has it! Yeah. Yeah, it's a limited. Does it have a glove box light? No. 2000. Damn, 2000. They got rid of it in 99. Let's go. The one I found. Oh, shit. Those are nice. The one I found online. Oh, look. <laughs> E-Fan. Just what I thought I needed. <laughs> oh, look. Even a wallet, dude. How about that? Wow. Wow. This was a, this was a good find right here. What the hell? Custom, custom mounting. Somebody tried to take it off and failed. That's what's going on here. It's missing some pieces, but it's a nice interior. Damn. Power seats. 
I almost feel like this is my XJ. Oh wait, we can get the door clips and these screws. Mm-hmm. It had the towing package. This is an auxiliary transmission cooler. So that means it has a Dana 44? No. <laughs> so for the console, there's two screws right in front of the visor clips. And then it kind of like snaps up there. You gotta like pull it down. And then, just, then you slide it forward. Oh, there you go. You getting it? I don't know how to fit. Where does this plug, plug fit through? Get in there with that. There we go. Yeah, that's no damage to it. done. The only things we're missing now are the bracket for the overhead console. We need some way to drill out rivets. You can probably just find one of these on eBay or something if you don't want to get this one. <laughs> hey, there's one. <laughs> Damn! I don't know how we're gonna get that second one though. That's... We're close, we're close. We're getting there. We'll figure it out. We're engineers, aren't we? Hmm. Hey! <laughs> Good job! We'll yeah, bend we'll... that back straight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can just hammer that in a vise or something. Good shit! Perfect little storm cloud to cool things off. So we got the overhead console temperature sensor and everything else we need for an overhead console swap. And then I just rented a steering wheel puller to get the cruise control clock spring out of here. There we go, good as new. So all we gotta do now is uh, head out of here with this bad boy and we're done. Taco pointed out that I could grab this lift gate. It's in really decent shape. It's white, it's got tinted window, it's got a defroster, the nice chrome brow here. Uh, there's just a little ding right here, a little dent right there. There's a line of rust along the top. It's honestly not too bad, but I just don't have time or anywhere to put it. Here we have a Ford Comanche. Ranger looks like a little four cylinder. I think it's a four speed. Look at this shifter. Oh, four on the floor. How many gears do we have? Look, <laughs> Look at that throw. <laughs> Where's the clutch? Oh, there's first, there's second, <laughs> there's third, fourth, fifth. It's a five speed. Damn, and there's reverse. Look at this throw, Taco. Look at this. What is that, like one foot? <laughs> Just driving my Ford Ranger. <laughs> Dude, imagine how fast this thing would be with all this shift throw. I want one of these now. I want I want a long throw shifter like this. Just thinking, like you're, you're maneuvering a parking lot, you're like, oh, don't mind me, gotta go into reverse. So we scored an overhead console and cruise control swap and installed crews in the yard's parking lot. ACU pull in Jacksonville brought us a much better yarding experience than the one in Georgia earlier, even though they only had the one XJ. So now that we've got cruise control, Taco has decided not to test it yet, just to build up some suspense. But this brake caliper is still giving us some issues. And the previous owner had this brake line like wrapped around itself when they put it on. They didn't put it on here right. So, I have a feeling this brake hose may be messed up. So we bought a new one. We got this soaking in PB right now. I'm gonna replace it real quick and see if this caliper stops acting up. All right, there we go. Didn't even have to take the wheel off or jack the car up. How many other vehicles could you say that about? Damn. Alright, when I hit the brake, bro, it jerks to the right. Yeah, because this one ain't doing anything because it's fucking melted. That's why. What's wrong? I, the caliper stuck again somehow. I don't know how. I don't know what's wrong. Yeah, we can't go anywhere until that cools off. I don't know what the hell's going on with it. <sighs> Maybe we should ask Calvin. Yeah, I'm gonna consult the server for advice here. Because we got a new rotor, new pads, new caliper, and new brake line. 
I don't know why else it would be locked up only on this wheel. The other one's fine. Best I can figure is these things are just rusted up and they are not allowing the pads to slide. So we're trying to clean them up. I don't know if that's going to work though, but we'll find out. I know it's just raining while the sun's out, normal Florida things. So we've decided to do the brake caliper delete for now. We're just gonna run three brakes and head to our next destination while we try to figure out what the hell. We could bring up the mechanical failure tally, but I don't want to count this brand new caliper against Taco. It ended up just being bad out of the box. He would later bring it back to O'Reilly in exchange for another new one. And then we never had issues with the brakes again. The front brakes, that is. So he's still got a clean run so far. Because personally, I think a brand new part failing shouldn't count as the Jeep's fault. Anyway, we temporarily split ways, and I headed to pick up those vent windows for Ronnie. And the guy selling them ended up being the same guy I sold my old transfer case to way back years ago when I first moved to Florida. Back then, he was in the midst of a 2.5 to 4 liter swap and needed a 4 liter transfer case because the 2.5s use a 21 spline input shaft instead of a 23 spline. He was also the guy that provided this side-by-side -side picture of an internal versus external slip yoke drive shaft that I used in the four-wheel drive swap video, so we had a small world moment because I'd already met this dude before. About the uh, engine mounts on the 2.5 are in a completely different spot, yep. but it runs now? Yep. Can I see the engine bay? I'm excited. <laughs> I, <laughs> I get all nerdy with these things too. <laughs> I like that grill, that's cool. <laughs> so this is a like a straight four liter swapped 2.5 XJ, huh? Yep, now it's got a straight six in it. Wow. And you can see the, the bracket right here where me and my buddy made out of corner and steel. Yeah, why don't you? Yeah, let me uh, let me get some high quality footage of that. <laughs> yeah. I got an inline filter. You want an inline filter? No, I don't. I don't you need, need it. No. I got one laying there. This is cool. It, I mean, it looks factory. Yep. You did a good job. Me and my, my cousin and his son. You ever seen one of these? What the fuck is that? This is a retractable hood light. No. <laughs> is it? Yeah. It doesn't really pull itself back uh, in, but oh, it's like on a wind-up cord. I want to take it apart and fix it, you know? That's cool. Um, I believe the bolt holes are still here on this hood. Yeah. Look at that. No kidding. That's where it goes. No shit. That's and that, cool as hell. that cord's like 10 feet long. It'll reach all the way to the back tire. Nice. That's so cool. <laughs> That's a cool find. Yeah. I just saw a Comanche. I just saw a Comanche. First Comanche of the trip. I had to turn around real quick. MJ spotted. 300? 300 Oh, I'm at 307,000. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, it's a column shift. Nice. Everything's original. <laughs> <laughs> wow, look at that beast. A couple days later, Taco successfully showed off his new Jeep to the family and met me at my dad's house to begin our trek to Texas. It's all ready to go. Cruise control works and the engine runs great, but it has death wobble between 55 and 60. Now, when you have death wobble, only at certain speed ranges like this, it's pretty much always unbalanced tires. So we went to the Mavis I used to work at, and Mr. Bossman let me take over a balancing machine to get these tires down to reasonable levels of static friction. Camera doesn't pick up on this display very well, but put simply, this middle number shows how unbalanced a wheel is. It needs to be below 0.25, or by my standards, below 0.19. Taco's wheels came up with a 0 .38, 0 .92, 3 .4, and 4.7, way out of balance. So I redid all four wheels, got them all below 0 .19 static friction, 
and the death wobble was gone for the rest of the trip. Waymid has got the shop to tell them that it's okay to just do it himself. So here he is doing it himself. So this, the roof of this building is where we're going to view the eclipse in 2045. He said that was cool? Yeah. The, the center line of totality is only like half a mile south of here. It's, this is pretty much as, this is closer to the center line than we were in Foreman. Hmm. Well, hopefully he's still the, the boss of this place. Yeah. Or else he's going to have to let the new boss know. Yeah. <laughs> From here, we headed back to Tallahassee. We'll stay the night at Ronnie and Jenna's place and test the Jeep on some very basic trails. Yeah. Man, I love the new XJ. Thank you. Appreciate it. So you just got it, huh? Yeah. So what yeah. was that, two weeks ago, a week ago? No, I actually bought it like more than a month ago, more than two months ago, I think. Look at this little grunt. Now this behemoth taco is an absolutely astounding engine. Isn't it great? <laughs> Literally looks exactly like my engine minus two cylinders. Yeah. <laughs> and it'll do everything your engine does. Wow, look at that intake manifold, just a big U. Yeah. <laughs> Four-wheel drive definitely works. Damn, that coil rear suspension does good on the TJs. <laughs> Look at that thing. Uh-oh. What did you do, Taco? <laughs> I need more. <laughs> Don't get high centered. Yeah, you got it. Good job. Good. Woo! Just go forward. I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to go forward. <laughs> <laughs> The next day, Ronnie and Jenna got us complimentary Waffle House. This is why they're my friends. And then Taco and I kept heading west, finally back in the correct time zone. The Jeeps did well, all through Pensacola, Mobile, but then... Gentlemen, we have just entered Mississippi. Taco, do you know why we stopped? Because you have to pee? No. <laughs> Good guess. <laughs> Do you know what state we just entered? Mississippi. Do you know what that means? He doesn't know. I don't know. He doesn't know. If you're grabbing this, you could only be doing one thing. Retorking your starter. You're goddamn right, Taco. <laughs> we have a procedure around here. And I swear, he did not say nothing. Only thing he did was pull this out, and I knew the story. <laughs> All right, here's my Jeep. Here's the upper one. Still torqued properly. And here's the lower one. It's 
still properly torqued. No evidence of starter falling out. That oil, dude. Yeah, that's normal. That's not good, man. That's, dude, that's nothing. <laughs> really? That's nothing for a four liter. That's a lot of oil, though, man. I, I wonder how much I'm burning or how much I'm losing. If I'm losing us, I don't want to be having to put oil in this thing every... It doesn't need oil. That's fine. There you go. All right, upper bolt torqued properly. All right, hold on, hold on. We've got to adjust the torque wrench. The oh. lower, lower one goes to 30 foot pounds. We need to follow factory specifications. Otherwise, we will die. What did I just do the other one to, like 32? 35. Oh. There you go. I do think it's kind of funny how concerned Taco was about the basically non-existent oil leaks, but he'll learn, don't worry. With the starters torqued, our next stop was Calvin's in Baton Rouge. We stayed the night and went to meet his new friend AJ the next day, who has three cats <laughs> and three Cherokees. Well, this still is definitely one of the moments of all time. <laughs> This, this is uh, competing against um, Eclipse. Operation no. Eclipse. No. What do you, what do you got there, Taco? They gave me a flamethrower. In the next clip, you will see me shooting this flamethrower. <laughs> the water's on fire. That's crazy. Five hundred bucks for this thing? <laughs> it's so fun to sit here and get It's so hot, yeah. Who's next? Come on, Calvin. Not the water. Not that dry grass. Let's go! Holy shit. Hi, James. <laughs> this is sick. Dude, this is fucking sick. Look at that! Oh, cool. Wait, I want a slow-mo video. Oh, Calvin's XJ has quite a few problems with the cooling system that could be remedied if he just re-geared the axles, but instead he decided to install some hood vents, which will also help with heat soak. He's going to convoy with us to Texas, so this will be his test drive for these new hood vents. And now that Calvin's on board, we'll add him to the mechanical failure tally. Uh, not for any particular foreshadowing reason or anything, just because. Before we leave the next morning, we'll peruse through his local junkyard, too. It is. Look at that shit. Oh my god, it's the infamous 2002 with the 4 liter. <laughs> yeah, they have a 2002 Jeep Cherokee. It's got the hood struts. Cherokee? How? That's a Patriot. No, 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 it's, it's a, a Cherokee. It says the VIN, it's okay, a, the VIN for the 2002 Jeep Cherokee comes up as a 1991. No, it's clearly a, in mine. It's clearly it, it, a it, 4 liter <laughs> right there. Or, wait, what? Oh, yeah, four liters. It's liter. Laredo trim, too. Laredo trim Patriot. It is 928. Okay. You all need the camera on me to keep track of time. Oh, yes, we do. Shit. It's important for the guys. Important video documentation. Taco, what have you found here? A new radio for my car. Holy oh. shit. <laughs> all right, no, but in all seriousness, this is like a. I don't know. This is an 85. This is an I don't know. Nissan Z car. It's got the, it's got the uh, manual. I don't know why it has that 300ZX badge, unless it is, but the cool thing about this one, it's got the digital dash, which these only came in like a handful of them. If someone were to pull this dash out and sell it, it'd be worth a good amount of money. And this car has the T-tops. If you go look in the identical Z next door, you'll notice the dash is the cheaper 
base model dash. Much more basic than the other one. Those dash on eBay are are pretty good. I mean, that's a nice seat. Oh, and these cars. Those are the ugliest taillights like I've ever seen. Where? What? It's a honey. It's like a beehive. That is kind of weird. This is. This doesn't look like an X J part. What well, year right, is I'm this? I'm just gonna rip this shit out. Watch out for that brake disc. Okay. Ah! What did they do back there? Dude, look at that headliner. That's immaculate. Oh, it is. Wow. Oh. Here, wait a minute, let me get you a seat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Here's our first catastrophe of the trip. We're losing brake fluid. Out of Jurassic Sausage. Brain. Sausage. Yeah. Sausage McMuffin. You think that'll fix it? Yeah. Sausage McMuffin. We need to find out what brake line blew. Well, everything's wet. Yeah, everything's wet. We're gonna. This will be fun. Yeah, it's this. Oh, it's shit, this brake know. line right here. Blue. Holy shit, that's a lot. All right, we gotta. It sounded like that. We gotta go to. Uh, we gotta go to O'Reilly's, bro. Hey, where's that? Uh, where's that clamp? You, I gave. You. I have it. I have it. We can use that. All right. No, I got. Hopefully. I got the brake line to the rear axle clamped off here. So we're gonna use that to hopefully limp it to O'Reilly's or something. Yeah, she holds pressure. It's a good thing we checked that out. For the past two days, I've been saying, huh, oh well, it's just a thud, let's just keep driving. <laughs> yeah. Until finally I'm like, wait, but you know what? I need to check the brakes. <laughs> what do you know? Brake reservoir, and all right, so we are, uh, what are we gonna do? We're just gonna YOLO it? I'll just tow him from the rear. Yeah, that's all, he's got a winch? Yeah, we'll just, we'll hook I it up drove, right here. I drove with one brake from Brunswick to Tampa. <laughs> I think I'll make it to Houston from Baton Rouge with just my two fronts. Yeah, you'll be fine. Yes, it would appear as if it is still capable of stopping. She has stopped, we, we didn't run out of brake fluid just yet. We're good. Probably check to see how much we lost, though. Yeah. If any. Well, Guess I... who does not overheat? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Hood vents. Hood vents, man. Hood I need vents for the wind. Oh man, I got my AC cranking. I've been revving that bitch in third gear. Wow. Third gear? What? <laughs> yeah. Every time I go up, we go up a bridge. I have to crank that bitch in third gear. Yeah. <laughs> Just to keep up. Still rocking those stock gears with the 34 inch tires. Yeah, I clamped off the brake line pretty good. So you're not oh, losing good. any. Hey, what yeah. state are we in, Taco? Tejas. It's not like you used the brakes that much. We made it. Look at that. Look at how patriotic it is here. We have crossed <laughs> the Texas state line. We're at mile marker 880, which is the highest numerical mile marker in the entire country. <laughs> Texas uh, likes to brag about that one. Bruh. Touch screen. What kind of dystopian future nonsense is this? Oh, I bet I can't even mute the ad. Where's the speaker? I'm gonna rip it out. Look what I found. Look what I found. Hidden way in the bottom corner. What'd you do? So it would appear that Calvin's power steering has oil to the point that he has none left. Skill issue. Yeah, I was so, pushing it, man. So it has been boiling, huh? Hey, do y'all want to pull onto this road? I can't turn. This is, oh, not at all? Yeah. Okay, because this is really dangerous. Yeah, yeah if I, I put know. something in right now, I can probably crank it up. Right when I seen him farther enough behind me, I seen smoke barely behind him. So I called Calvin. I said, hey, Ta Calvin, how are your temperatures? He said, oh, they're fine. I said, really? He goes, oh, wait. That's no, I need to pull over, like, right now. <laughs> it's leaking or it's hot or it's boiling? 
Looks like a leak to me. Where's that at? Damn. Damn. Everything's going to shit. Is this a, a That's fine. Put some muscle into it. There you go. You don't need power steering. Drain the pump, bypass it. We can try to fix it at my house, if anything. Unless he wants to continue driving and it, let it leak out until it's empty. I think the smoking he was seeing was all this oil getting on the manifold, and that's why yeah. it was smoking. I don't think it was anything detrimental. Yeah, power steering fluid is combustible. That's not I, good, man. It's just leaking. And he, it's just leaking to the point where he ran out of it, so that's why he lost power steering. So the pump is probably still fine, it's just leaking atrociously bad. It, it's going to leak out its entire yeah, it's capacity in like worse. two minutes. So I don't, I don't think there's any sense driving it. I think we should just leave it here and take my Jeep yeah. to O'Reilly's. What mile marker are we at? 810? All right. All right, Taco's got to get back for his work duties. So we're going to send him in his brand new Jeep all alone the rest of the way. Me and Calvin are going to run to O'Reilly's. There's not really one nearby, but we got to go to an O'Reilly's because that's where he bought the pump from, and we're going to warranty it. It's leaking between the reservoir and the pump itself. That little O-ring in there blew out. How long do you think? Well, I don't know. I think the O'Reilly's is like 20 minutes away, so that's 40 minutes of driving right there. And then, 15. yeah. So we'll keep you updated. <laughs> All right, Calvin, now that we're dead in the water. Park, there yes! it is. Yeah. Yes! <laughs> Two geniuses. Well, one and a half geniuses. <laughs> Our collective seven brain cells are Woo! back at it again. Now how do we get off? <laughs> oh yeah, you can't really unscrew it now. It's still wedged in here. Okay, let's, let's, uh, let's do it. <laughs> Alright, never time. mind. Never mind seven yeah. brain cells. I'm giving them too much credit. <laughs> let's get back down real quick. It's the finest content. <laughs> See, when something goes wrong, it makes a damn good video. <laughs> That's how you got to think about it. I'm suffering for you guys. Yep, this is all scripted. Um, we planned on the power steering pump exploding at mile marker 810. Right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you sign a contract where you can't tell anybody that? <laughs> no. All right, baby. Uh, okay. Y'all good over there? <laughs> Scratch your pristine condition panels, oh. man. Yeah, my 200,000 mile sun faded interior. So the closest O'Reilly's doesn't have the pump, but the next farthest one does. So we're going to Baytown, Texas. Oh, Baytown? What That's where Jimbo's from. <laughs> Hi, Jimbo. Oh, Jimbo. Oh, Jimbo. <laughs> Hi, James. Well, here we are. We're gonna have to get the pulley off of here somehow, but. Yeah. All right, so we got a new pump under warranty, but they didn't have the puller tool to get the metal pulley off of the old pump. So now we're gonna go to a second O'Reilly's to get the puller tool to transfer the pulley to the new pump and return that to get his core Ooh. charge back. Very complicated stuff. Is it pulling it off? Yeah. Almost there. There it is. Wow. Okay. Yeah. There's a, there's like a lot of friction to it. It didn't. It didn't. It plopped out when I took it out, but it didn't plop back in. When I put it back in, yeah. Oh. That's a lot. Uh, here, I'll hold it so it doesn't. Okay. Wait. Hold on. Hold on. Don't flip it over. Cause like, dude, this is different. This is different from the other one. Why? 
the other one had like this weird ass piece that I had no, I think, I don't know. It had like this little adapter sleeve. And I think that's where it's leaking on the other one. Yeah, that's definitely where the leak came from on yeah. the other one. No, that's why I confused. This looks normal. Like, this would not have confused me. The other one was totally different. This, okay. like, this was like a separate piece. Okay, well. Okay, well now we can get that off of there. Yeah. All right, now that we've got everything that we need from O'Reilly's, we gotta go back to the Jeep and put everything back together. Mm -hmm. Just one question. Yeah? Where's the Jeep? Marker 80 something, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, I remember where it was, I'm okay. just messing with you. <laughs> okay. So because it's a WJ going in an XJ, we have to take this fitting off and reinstall the one Calvin Custom built for this application. And in order to crack this big old thing free, we're gonna mount the power steering pump in here so it's got something to you know, leverage off of. And then we're gonna put the reservoir back on. Yeah, so we gotta take it back off. Yeah. <laughs> and then put it back on. How many Ugga Duggas? Yeah. Uh, probably like three or four, honestly. Damn, that's like six. So, Calvin has a WJ power steering pump, which is a swap I've been asked to make a video on a couple times now. But this is something I talked about with Dex. It might sound like a controversial take at first, but the WJ steering pump is not an upgrade. Me and Calvin are currently working on fully researching and experimenting with this now, and someday I will have a video on the WJ steering pump, so I don't want to spoil anything yet. All you need to know for now is it's not worth the trouble. So, on the WJ V8 power steering pump swap, when you take off the reservoir from the pump, there's this o-ring in here and what nobody tells you is that o-ring likes to slide forward and you can see there's a there's two pieces of plastic in here try to get it to do it this inner piece which is stuck now conveniently there we go see right the the o-ring slides off and gets caught in this lower channel down here created by that smaller plastic piece so what we did was we just take off the, we pulled out the plastic piece and took the O-ring off of the plastic piece and put it onto the larger yeah. uh, orifice. And, and that way we have two, step, two steps down and the O-ring is on the far back. And that's how it properly seals. Wow. There you go. Oh. It's not doing it? Oh, fuck. There Boom. it is. Boom! That was there a good one. That was a good one. It should, it should snap on like that, right? If it's not, like, clicking into place, something's not right. And these clips go on way easier. Yeah. Now we're talking. Get the flashlight on top so I can see the level. It's down for it now. Yeah, I... There's a gas station at like the end of this little stretch here, about a mile down. We've got it burped enough to be drivable in a straight line. <laughs> right, and of course, a mile down the road and the sun's peeking through the clouds and it's no longer raining over here. And it doesn't look very nice. What? It's leaking from there? Maybe. It could be residue. I don't think so. I don't know how I can leak from that. Because that is a new O-ring in that. No, I'm, I don't think it's leaking from there. I'm very concerned about how we just magically lost the ability to steer. Like all? Did we just snap something? That's what it sounded like. There was like a little clunk and then, oh, no. and then the engine sounded different. And then it wouldn't steer. Oh no. Alright, I'm going to start it up again. What the hell? Whoa, 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 whoa. What? What, 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 what? Yeah, we definitely broke something. Yeah, you're just gonna have to run without power steering. Now, what I'm concerned about is if this shaft sheared off in here. There's chunks. Well, 
there's there's chunk, but the the pump's not spinning, so we don't got to worry about chunks inside. What I'm concerned about is the pulley walking itself off. Yeah. And it might it might just fly off of here as you're driving, and the serpentine belt's gone, and well, at least you don't have a metal fan. Yeah. But. That's, so that's something to be aware of. But we can't we can't run it without the serpentine belt. So like yeah. we're just gonna have to chance that. Yeah. I mean like. Well, what I do know is my old pump is started. It's just starting getting loose, so it starts making sounds before it fully comes out. Okay. <laughs> I mean, okay. hey man, I'm just coping. Yeah, yeah, coping. I know. So, oh boy, yeah, this will be an interesting final hour. Final hour. Oh, that's the chapter of this section. I can live with the Texas. We're in Texas. I'm in Houston. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Come on. There you go. Turn it around. It's a good thing nobody lives here. <laughs> there you go. Who needs power steering? Not you. I don't need power steering. We're just chilling at 55. There's the Houston skyline. Calvin's right behind me without power steering. Traffic's pretty light by Houston standards. It's about 9 at night now. It's hard to move that thing without power steering, huh? What's going on? I'm tired, man. <laughs> Why is your trunk light on? Uh, I probably didn't slam that thing not hard enough. Uh -oh. I had a detrimental problem on the way home that I didn't tell anybody about. Oh, yeah? My horn is stuck. Oh, my God. I don't know how, but it's just like nonstop. Bro, for like 20 minutes, I drove just... <laughs> wow, okay. Down the highway. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Just take out the fuse. Look, come look. You're going to wake everybody up. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> oh my God. Good job, Taco. Good job. You set off the uh, damn alarm. Uh, stop it. Stop fucking with it! Press it. Just press it once. There you go. Sorry. Jesus. I'm really sorry. <laughs> no, I'm not. This is my house. Yeah. Oh, my, look, barely moved my steering wheel. It's the clock spring, then. Like, yeah. Anything with the anything with that. Junkyard clock spring moment. So what? It's bad now. Yeah. That sounds like a bad clock spring Wait, to you me. You have cruise in already? Yeah, we put cruise oh. in it. So I guess we need two clock springs now. Wait, it's bad. That's what would do that. How, would you How did it just go bad? It I just <laughs> got soaking wet. Probably. Here, look, I still got the thing with Tiggy. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's because we ripped it out of a junkyard off a 25 year old vehicle. That's why. Dude, I am <laughs> soaked. I probably have the power steering <laughs> yeah. in my pocket. Final hour was rough, and we were all crabby and tired and on each other's nerves after a day out in the rain. I took out the horn relay on Taco's Jeep, and we all went to bed. Taco and Calvin got another new pump warrantied, put it in, and got his steering back operational. And then we all headed out to test Taco's new Jeep. Yeah, I'll pass. <laughs> Although Calvin's XJ is totally built, his front axle has a fried pinion bearing, so he doesn't have his front drive shaft. Just don't stop. Yeah. Yep, just keep moving. You won't get stuck if you keep moving. Our adventure has culminated to this, our mostly stock 2000 XJ with a 2 inch lift and 10 year old 30 inch tires. <laughs> no problem. Damn, I was getting wet from that. Crunchy.
Oh god. Check my angle, am I gonna hit the air dam? Oh yeah, the air dam, the ever so important. Nah, no, you're good. You think I'm gonna bottom out at the top? Yeah, definitely. I, I would not go over the, the ridge at the top, no. Um, but you can definitely go up here and like sit on it and then just back down. Does it have a hitch? You're definitely gonna scrape the hitch on the back, but that's about it. Okay, I don't think I want to do this anymore. Why not? I'll do it. Put her four low. Oh my God. <laughs> There's the hitch. You still got a ways to go. What did I do? Uh, if you keep going, you'll kind of get stuck on the hitch. Otherwise, you can just back down. Oh. Look at that. Look at that front clearance. No sweat. We're good. We're good. Got, now that we haven't got stuck, how do we help? Yeah. Well, it's kind of gone. Oh, it's not gone. What are we gonna do? <laughs> wait, 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 honk your horn, honk your horn. But well, he's gotta stop right behind us. <laughs> Dude, we're stuck. Yeah, we are. Oh, uh -huh. this is where the fun begins. Oh, hi, Taco. How fucked is fucked up? That's pretty fucked up. <laughs> what do you got there? <laughs> Child safety lock moment. We're gonna have to probably pull it backward. Well, I don't know. You think he can come around? He might gotta come around this way. Oh yeah, dude, you are not getting your dips over that. <laughs> I think backwards is the way to go. Look at your driver front tire. Sick ass photo though. That's good, that's playing good. Oh. I fell into the other side. Oh, well, you're <laughs> Here, I can hold you from you. Give me your. Like, the... <laughs> Forward! <laughs> okay, back! <laughs> Pull! <laughs> You're gonna have to. Yeah, just. I don't know. Damn how... it. <laughs> oh, he's giving up. It's, it's a... <laughs> what? Reverse! Oh, we're backing out. He's barely even stuck. Alright, stop, stop, stop. Don't want to run over the cable too much. Do you think you can steer it? Do you think you can steer it up over on the right side from where you're at? If you move my slides, I'll give it a try. Okay. He's gonna back up a little bit more. Yeah, you you can back up after I get the toe strap out of here. Hold on. Okay. All right. Well, we didn't get anywhere. Try going forward again. You're not quite stuck. Try going forward again. What? Oh, okay. Yeah. Never mind. All right, take two. Damn! 
All right, hold on. And send it. <laughs> Lack of send. Back it up. Back it up. Huh? Back it up. All right, back it up. Back it up. Okay, okay. Shift into reverse, SpongeBob. Reverse. Oh, yeah, reverse. <laughs> There you go. Just needed a running start. Good call. It won't let him get out of that line he's on. There we go. At least he's not as stuck anymore. <laughs> Yeah, you didn't tell me you were gonna do anything, so I didn't record any of what you just did, but you got out. Fuck! Oh well. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn. I got in the way. He didn't want to hit me. There he is. Yeah. He, he could have done that the first time. First day. Actually, not first day. First real day. First real day in the mud. She did great. Only got stuck one time. Well, seven times, but yeah. Seven times if you include one time. Uh, we got our new paint job, so now you can't tell that the red paint's faded anymore. Uh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked. That was fun. I need to go check on my U-joints. So. <laughs> yeah, there was, there was screaming in agony the whole time. But, does he have a reading light? Yeah, and then you cut to the reading light. Look, Look at this. Yeah, it's, a, can, it's like a little reading light. You can light. adjust it. it yeah, you can you put it over the glove box. That's my glove block box light. Yeah, look at that. Perfectly illuminated glove box without a factory glove box light. I want one. I need to put a thing here. This guy was the real MVP. Right? He showed us how it's done. This guy never got stuck. <laughs> uh, so what's your, what's your trick, Daniel? Huh? What's your trick? How'd you not get stuck the whole time? Throttle out. Throttle out. I was send it! I was throttling you. Didn't send it. I told you to send it. No, no, you were not you bouncing the limiter. No, Both you. The, all three of those times you let off. That's why you got stuck. Nah, <laughs> it because it, it was just spinning. You got out the last time because you kept hey, gunning it. I'm trying to tell we're you. Hit the weenie wash over in the front of your neighborhood because it's like a. He got distracted again. Oh, let's start hiking back. Uh, yep. <laughs> Mud puddle. Oh, he's going around it. We're good. Oh. This man saved us all. The man who saved us all. Yeah. We have sustained minor cosmetic damage.
taco is in complete disarray. He's gonna sell it. What are you gonna do, Taco? Are you gonna sell it? No, how did my how did my Jeep fender get fucked up? I don't know. I don't understand. Look at how shiny that thing is. Did good. Whatever that noise was and the rear brake just stopped happening, so I guess Calvin fixed it. My leaves are worn flat again. Well, I mean, that's, we know why. Yeah, I carried way too much shit around in this thing. I, I really need to get some higher quality leaves. These are from General Spring, which everybody said was of the highest quality, but uh, I'm gonna have to probably just go with lift springs and, and I'll wear them down to stock height in a matter of months. But my CV shafts are still holding together. Everything still works. And so, thus came to a close Operation Taco. What is this video, like almost two hours long? Is anyone even still watching? You know, this was wild because I cut out like two hours worth of footage too. So what you saw in this video was just a crumb of everything we did. A wild ride for the history books indeed. So Taco's first project was a disc brake swap. He's already put the Jeep to work towing trailers and with only one mechanical failure on the thousand mile drive home from Georgia, we gotta take a step back and remember where he started with this. The engine looked like this and neither of us had ever built an engine before. Based purely off of Dex's videos, we figured out how to and did well enough of a job that that engine never had any problems all this way. And still drives today, I say, two months later when I finally finished editing this video. So, welcome to the club, Sir Taco. Prepare to waste all your money on this addictive thing and have all sorts of fun doing it. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you on my way back home.